Shalom and hello again. On today's program, the prophet Ezekiel had many words of warning, but he also had a word of hope for the nation desperate for restoration. The good news is coming up on Our Jewish Roots with Bible teaching by Dr. Jeffrey Seid. The Lord said unto Ezekiel, Son of man, can these bones live? <laughs> Prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm David Hart. I'm Kirsten Hart. I am Jeffrey Seif. So we've heard a lot of judgment already in this program, in this series, but today I like it because there's a little piece of the puzzle of hope and good news. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm telling you, in this world, good news is in high demand, but very short supply. Yes. And it really is an example of uh, desperate people learning that God hears the cry of the heart. and. That's so important. And, and we can relate to what happens today, right? Yes, and would that hope just flooded lives. I know that, you know, a lot, we, we live close to desperation behind the makeup and behind the smiles. And, you know, a lot of times we feel, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken mm -hmm. me? And uh, uh, this is a program for the, the distraught, for the dis disenfranchised. You know, God doesn't forget. He does remember. He is strong and he helps. And, and Ezekiel and Ezekiel's people there in, in a refugee camp, they needed something because they hear, you know, they know what's happening in Jerusalem. That's a hard time. And thank the Lord that he, he comes in. Sometimes it's almost like at the last minute, mm -hmm. but he does come in. He's like, I'm going to restore you. I have he, good news for you. He does. And it's a special kind of grace, too, because the reason why they were there uh, their own sins proved to be their own undoing. But even with sin and abysmal circumstance, God doesn't say, I forget you. He punishes and he restores. And there's beauty in that, there's grace in that, and the Lord only knows we can use mercy and grace. Exactly. Good news today, yes. Amen. So you're teaching today at a beautiful park correct? In Israel. In Israel. Our viewers send us to the Holy Land, and it's an, it's an honor for me, honestly, to open up the Bible, but to open it up from there is a joy. I hope this program opens up things to people as they take a look at the book from the land of the book. Good. We take you to that park right now with Dr. Seif's teaching. And the Lord spoken to Ezekiel, prophesy, therefore, concerning the land of Israel. O mountains of Israel, ye shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to my people Israel. For behold, I am for you, and I will turn unto you, and ye shall be tilled and sown, and I will multiply upon you man and beast, and they shall increase and bring fruit, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Beautiful ponds, pleasant, gentle running creeks, foliage round about, deep and beautiful colors. I'm coming to you from a national park in the modern nation state of Israel. And this lush, this gorgeous environment reminds me of predictions in the Bible, wherein the prophets envision that a land that was desolate will come back to life. And friends, we're living at the season of the rejuvenation, Bible times coming alive before our eyes. Speaking of Bible times, in chapter 36 of Ezekiel, 
the prophet here envisions that this place, Israel, that was desolate at one point, would again become like Gan Eden, like Eden. In fact, the prophet says that the land would be greater than its former estate and uses the vision of paradise to describe it. Paradise comes from a Latin word meaning enclosed garden. And here from this beautiful garden type area in this national park, I want to bring you the word of the Lord. Chapter 36, 1. Verato and thou, ben Adam, son of man, hinove el harei Israel, prophesy to the mountains of Israel. Viamarta harei Israel, and speak to those mountains of Israel. Shemu debar radonoi, hear the word of the Lord. And what is the word going on in verse 2? Because the enemy has said against you, aha, the ancient high places are ours in possession. Therefore prophesy and say, even because they have made you desolate and swallowed you up on every side, that you might be a possession unto the rest of the nations, inasmuch as those people have wasted you and done this to you, the Lord goes on to say, I will multiply back to you many times over what was taken from you. He says in verse 4, Hear the word of the Lord God, thus saith the Lord God to the mountains, to the hills, to the streams, to the valleys, to the desolate waste places. As he goes on to say in verse 9, Behold, I am for you, and I will turn you, and you'll be tilled and sown, and I will multiply men upon you. I will cause you to be inhabited. I'd imagine these individuals who were farmers were thrilled to learn that their humble estate would be transformed. They were told that God had something good for them. And this is a word for all of us in the sense that sometimes we can be bested by despair, disoriented by circumstances. We feel that we've been ravaged by sin, we've been victimized, and we've lost what's rightfully ours. And here we are, distant from what we would wish for our lives. Isn't it good to know there's a God who says, I am for you, not against you. Who says, I'll restore you. Who says, I'll make the rains to come down and I'll build you up again. That's a word for Israel and that's a word for us. And it's a word that comes to us from Ezekiel. And to his word we'll attend as we consider Ezekiel and the Middle East peace process a fruitless vine. To the prophet Ezekiel, God's picture of a faithless Israel. And the word of the Lord came unto Ezekiel. Behold, the wood of the vine is cast into the fire for fuel, and so will I give the inhabitants of Jerusalem. God's purpose for his people would be made clear, even in the purging fire. Bible writers employ a considerable amount of uh, nature imagery. In Ezekiel, the 15th chapter there, the prophet sees Israel as a vine. Israel's not faring very well. Branches are broken off and thrown into the fire. It's a tough story. Interestingly, in the Johannine Gospel, in the Gospel of John, the 15th chapter, Yeshua Jesus says much the same. Well, so much for the bad news. There is a discipline that's true, but God's mercy triumphs over his judgment. Ezekiel says that God's going to visit Israel with judgment, but that's not the full story because his mercy gets the better. Come with me, I'm gonna show you the miracle in the eastern part of the Mediterranean here as Tel Aviv celebrates its 100th birthday. Come with me. And I will multiply men upon you, says the prophet Ezekiel here in chapter 36, verse 10. He goes on to say, And the cities will be inhabited. God's got a great future for this part of the world. Oh, friends, many years ago, Ezekiel was in a place called Tel Aviv, interestingly, in uh, another part of the world and he is called forth. He is given visions of a world to come. He sees God's judgment upon Judah. 
but more importantly, he sees restoration and the literature is rich in restoration motifs. And here he's explicit, speaking of God raising up a future generation and rebuilding the cities of Israel. And what a place to tell that story here at the eastern rim of the Mediterranean Sea with the beautiful vista of Tel Aviv in the background. Oh, and the atmosphere here is brisk with activity, with life as construction people are busy plying their trade, as tourists are coming here from all over the world to witness the miracle in the desert. I'll tell you, one trip to Israel is better than a hundred Sunday school lessons. Why is that? You breathe the air, you soak it in, and you see that every word of God proves true. God is truly at work in the world. Tel Aviv celebrates its 100th anniversary, and it wasn't long ago here, just to my left, in Nebit Tzedek, there was an oasis of justice as Jews made their way here to begin carving out a place in the world. But they're driven more than by just ambition. There's a sense of providence that's guiding and working through their efforts. For a hundred years later, we have this. We have the miracle of Tel Aviv that's growing and glowing, that's a beacon of light and hope for Israel and the freedom-loving peoples of the world. I hope you'll join with me in praying against and standing against the voices of oppression and totalitarianism that would want to get in the way of what's happening here in this part of the world. I don't care what you hear on the news, Jewish people are good people, decent people, just people, equitable people. Yes, we have our scoundrels, and yes, we deal with them. But you're looking at a just and orderly society, a miracle here on the rim of the Mediterranean, a miracle that Ezekiel the prophet spoke about many, many, many years ago. Our Creator chose certain places on the planet to reveal Himself and His message of redemption to us. Mount Sinai, Moriah, Olives, the Mount of Beatitudes, as well as various seas, rivers, and deserts, these were the places. Some are now only ruins, yet they continue to tell of the Lord's faithfulness and love. These sacred backdrops have been beautifully captured in our resource this week the book, Heaven and Earth, Landmarks of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Our producer and director, Ken Berg, has assembled some of his favorite photographs taken during his four decades of travel through the lands of the Bible. Contact us and ask for the book, Heaven and Earth. Our Jewish Roots is more than just a television program. See what you are missing on our social media outlets. On Facebook and Twitter, you'll find our daily Name of God devotional, current news articles, the Bearded Bible Brothers, and more. On our YouTube channel, you'll find faith foundations, music, interviews, the Bearded Bible Brothers, and more. Or find everything on our website, levitt.com. We invite you to keep in touch and join us on social media. For many, a trip to the Holy Land is the dream of a lifetime. Where else can you go see the scriptures come alive as you visit the sites where so many biblical events happened? We invite you to come on a Zola tour in the spring or the fall as we explore Israel and Petra. Reserve your dream of a lifetime. Contact us for more information. You've been able to see Dr. Seif on location in the glorious Holy Land throughout this whole series. And we would like to invite you to go see the land for yourself. So many people have said, uh, we want to go, we're excited, but they just haven't taken the next step in getting in touch with the office and putting the name down. That's a big step, isn't it? It is. But it's very good. We'd love to have you come with us. And if you want to find out more about 
what we do as a ministry. We have many uh, things under our big umbrella. Find us on social media. Do the at sign and our Jewish roots, all kind of extra programming. If you want to know what's really happening in Israel, look at our Jewish roots. Dr. Seif's teaching in Israel and also dramatic reenactments that we bring you from Israel, also sending us to Israel would not happen without your support. So we just want to say thank you so much. Right now, let's go back to Israel. A once dry, desolate land, now restored, welcomes new life. Thus saith the Lord, ye shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to my people of Israel. For behold, I am for you, and I will multiply upon you man and beast, and they shall increase and bring fruit, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. It's called a shuk, a marketplace, and what a marketplace it is here in Jerusalem. The atmosphere just bristles with life and activity. It's teeming with people coming to get some of the good fruits of the earth, fruits that were produced by Eretz Yisrael in the land of Israel. There's all kinds of fruits here, but you know, it wasn't always the case. A hundred plus years ago, Mark Twain came to this land and commented how desolate it was. There was nothing to speak of here but ruin and decay. That was then, this is now, and as I'd said, the atmosphere bristles with life. The land has produced its fruits. The Jews pray for the fruits of the earth uh, before a meal, before a drink, and lo and behold, we have it all around us now as people come here in order to taste some of the goodness that is part of the experience of the revived nation state of Israel. Interestingly, Ezekiel, to go back to his word, said as much in chapter 36, verse 35, he says, the Omru Heretz Halezu Hanishma Hayata Gan Eden. The land that was desolate has become like the Garden of Eden. The national anthem for Israel itself is Hatikva, language that's gleaned from Ezekiel the prophet. And it seems to me that the scene in front of me, that which takes place around me, was envisioned years ago, a prophet who was displaced from his place of origin, who no doubt despaired for life itself, envisioned beyond life's abysmal circumstances that there'd be a coming back to life. He promised it. We're seeing it here in Yerushalayim, the city of peace. Nineteen forty-eight was that year that the land was finally restored. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Ezekiel saw that vision. That was an interesting piece that came into play, and it and it made I would say the puzzle complete. There well, you go. Yes, it's restored. The, no one would have thought it, humanly speaking. Ezekiel, as he surveyed the landscape around him. The, decay, despair, disorientation, exiles, hopelessness. Uh, that was the order of the day, but he saw a new day in the future. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. There's this starburst of, wait a minute, God's not done yet. It's good news for Ezekiel, it's good news for us. I, I wonder if he had any doubt during that time, thinking, is this for real? And he didn't get to see that happen in 1948, kind of sad. He didn't see it, but it's not just a verse or two in passing. Ezekiel is very descriptive about uh, Israel's restoration and what will come as a result of it. Now, I should say some decades later, Israel was restored as a fledgling uh, Persian colony, but it never achieved the significance, the extent that's described in Ezekiel. Thus, let's look and see what God's doing today because um, it seems to me Ezekiel's uh, prophetic word has applications way beyond his day into the distant future, into our day right now. That's why we do what we do here in this program, to help us with what we're going through in our lives. I think believers woke up to the fact that God's up to something in the world uh, with Israel's reemergence as a nation state, with all the armies that came against her, that uh, the way God enabled Israel to not just survive but thrive, 
individuals are reading the Bible, they're reading the headlines, they're seeing that. And I think Israel's emergence was a peace that gave confidence uh, in the Bible that wouldn't have otherwise have been there. I think Israel's emergence strengthens a lot of faith. The people were restored, but one of the, the biggest miracles was this desolate swampland. No one wanted it. Land is thriving. I mean, that's one of the reasons uh, we love Israel so much and why you should go to Israel <laughs> right now. Get your tickets is because we get to see the prophetic come alive in the land itself. It's unbelievable. And if I can just add something to it, not to diminish any import from what you said. Yes, come to Israel, visit the Holy Land, see the restored nation states. One of the things that our supporters do in supporting us when they send a dime or a dollar, it's not just supporting the story of Israel's emergence. And those that go with us, it's not just visiting the land of the emergence, but for every dime and dollar that's sent in, money goes to support what the Lord is doing spiritually in the land by supporting uh, gospel-related efforts in the land, those that are laboring there behind the scenes to bring Jesus into the forefront of the modern miracle. And so, thanks for that. And it is literally something, and I say we, when we go to Israel, the food we eat fulfill prophecy. His Holy Spirit is also moving rapidly through His people in that land. There's, there's so much restoration. It is a land of miracles, and Ezekiel saw it way back when. He did, you know, and speaking of way back then, uh, Zola Levitt, who founded this ministry, quite a pioneer in bringing Israel uh, into view on, on, on Christian television, he said that he thought that one trip to Israel was worth 10 years of Sunday school. Mm. It really is a blessing. So keep pushing, coming to Israel. Yep. It's not a vacation. It is that, but it, it, it's a pilgrimage. It's not just that. It's, it's beyond description, quite frankly. <laughs> That's good. Kind of a roller coaster ride in this whole series. Come back next week. It's time to go. But right now, we leave you with this. As we go, Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I'm asking why Even friends around me question What I'm going through Help me understand I will not keep silent Speaking in anguish this heartache and sorrow, they fill my soul. Why have I been singled out? Oh Lord, what have I done? God, withdraw your hand. Oh,
Join us right now for additional content that is only available on our social media sites, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Visit our website, levitt.com, for the current and past programs, the television schedule, tour information, and our free monthly newsletter, which is full of insightful articles and news commentary. View it online, or we can ship it directly to your mailbox every month. Also on our website is the online store, there, you can order this week's resource, or you can always give us a call at 1-800-WONDERS. Your donations to Our Jewish Roots help us to support these organizations as they bless Israel. Please remember we depend on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you. <laughs> 